I don't know, am I trying to bring the 90s back? Are they back? Is this in? With the casual... whatever. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. I'm just kidding, I'm not going to throw any of you today. Today. In my previous video, I set up my Hoya grow tent and I said what I need to do next, and this is something that I've needed to do for a while, is I need to clean my cabinets. I have two cabinets. You can see the one in the back and I have, I, I don't think I showed you that one in the back, but you will see it now. And you have seen my Millsbo cabinet. And I think I did rearrange it a couple of times since I last showed you, but today is really the time to clean it to shower the plants, to water the plants as well, give them a bit of feed. And I also think it will be a good opportunity for me to just, well, untangle all of my plants, check them for any pests, if, you know, something is going on so we can solve it right away, and maybe to reposition them. So I think it's time for me to stop talking and to actually get working because we do have a lot, I think, to do. Maybe not. Maybe this will be very easy. Usually isn't. Usually when I think that something will be very easy, short and simple, it turns out to be a complete mess. So, you know, I'm probably going to find millibugs. That's what I'm expecting low-key. So let's just get in the cabinets. Well, not physically in because it cannot fit, but you know what I mean. Setting that up took way longer than I expected. If the light turns on in the back, it's because the dimmer is not properly working. I do actually have a new replacement dimmer, so I've been just very lazy to put the new dimmer in. But I think today might be the day. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Maybe today is not the day. We will see how much work that demands. But anyways, that's the cabinet. I did turn off the lights. I am going to bring you in a little bit closer. So, you know, say goodbye to me right now. You will only see my hands. I will become a hand model now. We will just take a look and take, you know, the plants out from the Millsbo cabinet, take them for a shower. You don't need to see that. It's basically you turn on the water and shower the plants. I think you know how, how you do that. Then I'm going to bring them back, probably find a different position for them in the cabinet and we were going to clean the mess and then we're going to move on to the Rudsta cabinet. Let's get started. We have changed into glamorous work clothes, which I know it's not glamorous, but like my work clothes that I actually wear is always ripped and that's just not a look apparently for YouTube. This is the section where everything is kind of intertwined. Everyone is a friend here. So let's start with the easiest. <laughs> have this very sun stressed and very tangled Hoya species Fraser's Hill. I did recently cut her back quite a bit. She does get very big, but I don't know if we can see on this camera. She is very, 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 very sun stressed, looking gorgeous. I absolutely love this part and how that sun stressing looks like. I think maybe one day I'm going to just move her out of the cabinet, but for now she's going to stay in there. The next one hanging on the chains is this Hoya Waimanie. And this one has been through a lot, through Mealybugs. And it did not have fun in original shipping. So it's not very big. Actually, now it's getting quite long, which I'm happy to see. And her overall look is improving. In my experience, Hoya Waimanie has been really really a highlight Hoya. If I would put anything in highlight when it comes to Hoyas, it would definitely be Ho Hoya Waimani. Sometimes the Hoyas will get into these holes on the pegboard and you just want to make sure to monitor that. Now this Hoya Kentiana, I bought it as Kentiana. I don't even know if this is green or variegated. It's so sun-stressed, this part that I honestly cannot tell you whether it's green or inner variegated. I think it's green even, but um, it doesn't matter. This part here is very nice. It looks great. So I don't know, maybe I should move her a bit lower. We'll give it a thought. Um, interestingly, it has not produced a peduncle, even though it is in very high light. I use these IKEA clips that I have glued to these pots, so it's quite secure. And these go with the Scadis 
pegboard. This is where it becomes difficult. I think this Hoya Hevschkeliana is a bit tangled. It does feel very paper thin. You can actually see probably even on camera how underwatered she is. I'm going to give her water, don't worry about it. She is blooming and she has bloomed several times. I wanted to make a video on her, but I still didn't. But you know, despite her being underwatered, which we will sort out now, she has not lost any leaves. Sometimes the leaves will fall off when you underwater them. This is Hoya Carmele. Ah, we are stuck. No peduncles on this one yet, but a very cute small leaved Hoya. The leaves get very nice, and I hope I see it bloom soon. This one, um, this is worrying me a bit because I'm not sure if some of these leaves are yellow or sun stressed. Oh, we are very stuck. I'm trying to untangle this. I feel like I should have done that while this plant was still attached to the board. This is Hoya species VL9. A Hoya that looks, on photo, very similar to Hoya GPS 7240, but once you have them both together, they are quite different. See, this is what I'm talking about, but I think this is not yellowing. I think this is actually just some odd sun stressing because these leaves are not falling off. It looks very nice. I did took a cutting of it recently, and it's growing really well. There is a long vine there that has started to go up. I would really like her to be fuller, actually. Um, but, you know, I can either trim then the vine and root it again or, or trim it and hope for it to push out. I don't want to do any of those things because they require more work. So I think I'm just going to either leave it like that, which I don't think would be very useful. I may just kind of clip it up. Okay, so this is where things get messier. We have my Hoya, the true Hoya Tsangi here. One of the aerial roots did root into the pegboard. <laughs> Fantastic. No! Sorry, I almost took a plant with me. Adjust the exposure a bit so we can see them more normally. So this is the true Hoya Tsangi, very different than species Affinity Bortonia that is sometimes sold as Tsangi. Very, very nice, kind of grassy looking plant. I really, really like this one. Very fast grower and it does fill out really nicely. This was just one cutting, I believe, but yeah, it's just really, really fast grower. Hasn't bloomed yet. Hopefully soon we can see the flowers because I think they're supposed to be yellow. So I'm looking forward to that. This is my Hoya Apoda that I got from Hoya Passion. It bloomed and it has produced a long vine. The new leaves are very, very nice. The vine is very, very long, so I think I'm just going to trellis it. Oopsie. I'm going to break it. I'm going to trellis it, you know, just like this, basically, to keep that growth point going up. Let's take this one out as well. This is Hoya Pandurata and she is starting to branch out. I'm wondering if she should stay here. She's starting to get a bit big for the cabinet, in my opinion. I don't think it's a bad idea to lighten the load in the cabinet because you do have more Hoyas that will stay small for some time and they can go in the cabinet to replace some of the ones that I'm putting in the tent. And this one is very underwatered. Hmm. So this is supposed to be true Hoya Bortonia. You can see she is a bit thirsty. She does look different than the regular Hoya Bortonia. I would say it's more pubescent. This is a hanger I made myself. This is tangled. Shockingly, she grew all over the place, as you can see. I actually cut her back recently. I was selling cuttings of this plant. It's my Hoya Microstemma. Beautiful sun stressing there. We do have a flower coming in which you may or may not be able to see. So I think I'm going to leave her in the cabinet. She just needs to be watered. Actually, she's holding up quite well. The leaves are still firm, so definitely does not demand as much water. We have a couple of more Hoyas here. I have my Hoya 
that I'm going to drop, Hoya Mirabilis. She has three peduncles, and I grew this from a very small set of leaves, so I'm kind of proud of her. She has three peduncles but no flowers yet, so I think I'm going to... actually four peduncles. So I think I'm going to move her higher so it can get more light. And you know, this is the size that's good for the cabinet. I think. And I also think it's not a bad idea to sometimes rotate them around. Maybe some are getting too much light, we can, you know, put them lower. And then the ones that are, were lower, that were not getting as much light, we can put higher. This is Hoya, I think, Revoluta. Very interesting leaves. Kinda has a raised margin. I'm not really sure if camera is picking up on that. But I quite like this leaf. Also got it from a very small cutting. I think it was just about this size. So I think it's good. And I got it in November of 2021. So, you know, she took some time to start to grow, but we are growing. Another hanger here that I made myself on the side. I'm just going to take the Hoya. I'm not going to take the hanger out. Oh, she filled out so nicely. Oh my gosh. This is Hoya Pusilla BL10016. Again, she was small for a long time, but look at her go. You go, Glen Coco. Fall for you, Glen Coco. You go, Glen Coco. I really love the leaves in this. I know they're very, very much lacunosa like, but also they're a bit different. I don't know how to even explain it. One of the reasons that I'm showering these plants is, is I think it's a good preventative measure, or maybe not. not necessarily preventative but it's a you know it's a good idea to do that every now and then if you have mites or mealybugs or some pests that you may not see it kind of knocks them off my hoya minutiflora is also it has also been cut recently and it's, she is starting to look a bit fuller which i'm glad to see still quite firm despite the underwatering which is as you can see a common thing here quite a lot of peduncles I actually have no idea if she bloomed recently or not. This is Hoya species SR200905, another Hoya that had root mealybugs and not great experience with shipping, but she has grown and is looking nice. I do think I will move her somewhere else though so she can grow more. This is Hoya Bella, which let's see if we can show you how that looks like. The inner variegated Hoya Bella, looking absolutely gorgeous. She is going to definitely stay in the cabinet. This one is going to go in the tent. It's all the way on the bottom and she cannot really grow normally there. This is Hoya Bella PES03. Couple of yellowing leaves here, which does not surprise me considering how great I am with watering. This is supposed to bloom all white. So I'm looking forward to that. I actually do think we might have some mite issue here. We do have some nastiness here in the light. Those are the fallen flowers. And this is not looking great. That's Hoabitiensis that I need to take care of. So let's go down there. Okay, we are on the floor. This Hoabella is going in the tent. I want to make more space in the cabinet. So it's the outer variegated Hoya Bella. So this is Hoya Wang Viangiensis. She grew from a two-leaf, I think, cutting. And someone told me that this plant doesn't really grow well. Someone in the comments, but I, I don't know. I did not have many issues with it, if I'm being honest. But she definitely did not like me retrellising her, even though I made sure that the vine stays pointed up. This is Kaudata TN 99008. She is doing really well. I hope she blooms soon. We are going to leave her here. Probably you cannot see how that even looks like because of the light. It's very nice looking Hoya Kaudata. She did not have a great time with shipping as well. A lot of the leaves were yellow, but somehow they turned green again. I don't know how that happened. This one needs to be rescued from me. This is Hoya Vitiensis. You can see she is very dry. She needs to... I need to do something. I need to probably trim some of these dry vines and just restart the plant. I should have moved her to a substrate that is going to allow her to stay more hydrated with my lifestyle, <laughs> which 
includes a lot of underwatering. I got this as Hoya Griffithy, but this is not Hoya Griffithy. I think this is something else. She is going to stay in the tent, but it's definitely not Hoya Griffithy. We will wait to see the flower. I do have a couple of guesses as to what this could be. There is a lot of dirt here, so I'm going to clean all of that out. I'm going to clean the glass, make sure that everything is nice and clean, because we also don't want to, there to be a lot of dust. It's just, you know, then a great space for for um, pests to collect. Okay, so I showered all my Hoyas. They are currently very busy dripping everywhere on my floor, which was a great decision. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean out the cabinet. First, I'm going to... I actually never even unboxed the new dimmer. And it arrived a month ago. Clearly, I was not bothered enough by the non-dimming. So actually, this is a different dimmer than what I have. Mine has on and off button, and it's that button that is causing the issue. And there's not, nothing actually broken, it seems, because I took it to an electrician to see. It seems that there's just too many wires inside, and one wire is pushing on another, and that's what's causing it to not work properly, something like that. I don't know, electricity. I, I bet that's why the on and off button was removed. And now the dimmer, if you can hear that click, it works as on and off button. So anyways, I'm going to remove my old dimmer and put the new one. I just tried to access that through the glass. Please excuse me, I managed to unplug the other extension cord. Okay, so that's bright. Okay, so that's great. That will work much better now and I can start actually cleaning. Okay, so the cabinet is clean and the Hoyas are dry and it's time for me to put them back in the cabinet and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to only do the hanging ones for now because I think the ones on the trellises will go in the Ratsta cabinet which honestly since it is 8 p.m. we will have to do tomorrow. I thought this was going to take an hour to do both of these cabinets but clearly um, someone overestimated his capabilities. So I'm pretty much going to leave my Hoya Bella inner variegated down here towards the bottom. Actually, I think I might lift her up. With... <laughs> well, that happened. So I'm going to leave my Hoya Bella here, giving it more space to grow. Since I would like to see my Hoya Mirabilis bloom, I'm actually going to move her a bit up. So I think maybe here we can put Hoya Mirabilis. That was the spot where I kept my Hoya Kentiana. And I think I'm going to move that one a little bit lower. Let's see here, maybe. Okay. I think that's a good spot. I think I'm going to try to give Hoya Carmele more light. So she will go a bit higher. So somewhere here we can put Hoya Carmele. Next up is the variegated host Kiliana. And I think she does not have an issue being higher. So the fan is in our way. Well, I actually don't think that's gonna work for me. Let's move Carmele a bit here that spot and then I think maybe I can put variegated host Kiliana here. I am going to keep this one a bit lower, the species VL9. Now we do have this vine so I am going to just clip it back uh, so it can go up. I think Tsangi can go here, actually probably in the middle. 
I would like to see my Minutiflora up here. So maybe in this corner. We are getting a bit tangled up, so I think it's time to finish this setup. I think my Hoya Bortonier could possibly go here. Or possibly not. I'm going to risk putting Hoya Carmela a bit higher. I do have this hanger, which is good for the side. Let's see if we can put something there. If I'm not mistaken, my Hoya Pusilla was in that. So let's see if we can get her back in it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hanger, put it down there so I can put my Hoya Revoluta. She's a small Hoya, so she can fit down on the bottom. So now I think it's time to make some decisions. I think I'm going to put my Hoya Fraser Sill back where it was. And then I do wonder if on this other side I should actually put anything. I did have Hoya Waimanye there, but I'm just not really sure. I should put it there. I think I can put it on a trellis. And let's see. Yeah, maybe that's a bit too much. Definitely not too little. We can take Hoya Pusilla, maybe. I do wish this was slightly lower because it's not working for me. So I think I'm going to make an S hook. Okay, that's not bad. So I can put another Hoya there. Let's try to put our Hoya Microstema. Yeah, it doesn't leave much space. I think I'm going to have space for maybe one Hoya on a trellis here or two on the bottom. I'm just going to show you that. So you can kind of see there's not a lot of space on that shelf, but I think it's just enough for my Hoya Poda. And maybe I can put Waimani on a trellis there, but probably not because I think it wants higher light. So I think I'm just going to put Hoya Poda there and that's it. Maybe I can leave Hoya Pandurata just those two and then on the bottom we'll see what we will do okay so i had to sit down in front of the cabinet i had the craziest dream last night no this is not the black swan though it is one of my favorite films and i actually wanted to do a spoof on it for one halloween but i didn't anyways that's not the point of this video i am in front of my cabinet and i decided to do something different with it which reminds me that I want to publish this video in two days and I haven't ordered the parts that I need. So what I wanted to do with the cabinet, as you can see, or maybe I just need to get up. I think I showed you this before. So there is a metal shelf there and one of the lights is on that shelf. Now because these are hanging plants or I grow them as hanging plants, they are kind of you know, getting in between these spaces on the shelf. And also if anything is on the bottom, it will usually um, go through these wires and wrap itself around that. And I just thought, why not do this Hoya wall through the entire height of the cabinet? So what I will do, because I have this Mars Hydro light here in the cabinet, this is 150 watt light. It is dimmable and now it's dimmed all the way. I usually keep it at around 20 or 30 um, percent, but that's just for this section. There is nothing for this section and I don't want to put another light. Well, clearly not this one. I don't want to put another horizontal light. Instead, what I thought is I could take my regular LED tubes and put them vertically. I have two of these and this is 90 centimeters. So that will be just enough for this section. Here they are. Where are the numbers? 14.5 watts and 400, 4,000, sorry, Kelvin, uh, 1,250 lumens. So those are the two lights. I will probably upgrade to grow lights at one point, but this is what I have now. And yeah, I'm going to put two of these right here. Don't worry, I'm off to the side. What I need to do first is I need to release this light because that light cannot be taken out from the cabinet at least not so easily we're gonna do some electrical work don't worry i'm completely untrained in this but you know i've done this many times so i will most likely not get electricity shock let's just release the light first this is not going great come on zip tie 
it's unplugged, so we should be safe. I don't know how this is called in English. If someone knows the electricity work, they will know. So I will just take this electrical tape off. And I did all of these installations myself, so you know, <laughs> it's perfectly safe. I'm probably not going to show you the entire part of how I do this because I do not want this to be a tutorial. I don't want someone to die because something is not right. I did show my friend how to do the electrical wiring, but, you know, I'm not going to do that for YouTube. Okay, so this is removed. It's very easy. So now I have this left and I need to wire the new lights. This is an excellent angle. I should always record like this. So I will put both of the lights and I don't even know where the fur, I don't, I have lost my lights. I will put both of the lights in the cabinet. I still don't know how I will attach them to the side. I do have double-sided tape that's quite, it's supposed to be very good. It's not. Maybe I will find a way to attach it to the side. And I will put a junction box so I can have both of the lights on the one plug. That's what I want. I don't want two plugs. I already have this one going out of the cabinet, so I will wire both of the lights on this one plug. So I don't know if this is useful to many people, but what I did is I took one of the screws for the mills bow and I removed the white thingy. I do still have two on this side and I wrapped around some wire with plastic on it and I will um, secure the light with this. I will put double-sided adhesive tape, but again, sometimes because of the heat from the light, the tape will come off, but this will just make sure that it stays in place. So I guess if someone wants that tip, if you cannot find a good double-sided adhesive tape like I can't, then maybe this is the solution for you. Okay, I rewired my lights. Here is the junction box and here are the new connectors. And I didn't do any cable management yet. First, I just want to see if everything works. And if it does, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm hitting my camera as we speak, uh, or as I speak. Because you're being very quiet, I have to say. Hopefully I don't get electrocuted, but I did this so many times that I think I won't? Question mark. I guess it will make great content. Yay! Okay, there is light. Excellent. This video has seen more wardrobe changes than a pop diva concert, I think. But anyways, I ordered the pegboard for the cabinet and I told you I plan to put the pegboard underneath the exix uh, hold on <laughs> I plan to put the pegboard underneath the existing one and it's a very simple procedure so you get the board itself and there are different dimensions I'm using 56 by 56 centimeters for this one I will find the American measurements so you can know which one to get. You also get the manual, which we won't need, and you get this metal bracket. And you will, if you're installing this pegboard on a wall, you would need this, but we are not doing that, so we are not gonna need that part. The only thing that we will need are the screws that you get with the pegboard. Now, I'm going to show you how I installed it in my Millsbo cabinet, so we need to change the angle. So we will install the pegboard here. I don't know if you can see, there is a metal thing, metal plate, I guess, back here, and it does have holes for these things that hold the glass. We are going to take those out, so it may look a bit scary, but I think, you know, it will only be temporarily scary because the pegboard will actually hold the glass in place. I think it would be nice if it could meet the pegboard that's up there. Yeah, I think this is enough because here on the bottom, I don't know if you can see, that's enough space to hang some plants. And I can already see that the glass is popping out a bit, but I think we're fine because 
again, the top pegboard is holding it in place. I don't know if you can see, but there is some give to the glass. Of course, the, the fan is in my way. Did I completely forget that the pegboard will go there when I was installing that fan? Yes, I did. What you will need to do is um, align the openings in the pegboard with the holes. And I can tell you that this cannot go all the way because none of the holes align with the holes in the pegboard. We will need to lower it just a bit and I can see there is one opening there. There is one in the middle. I kind of wish we had one more towards the bottom and I guess you could, you know, you could drill or, you know, I guess adjust this pegboard a bit so you could fit one there. But uh, once again, I'm going for the simplest solution. So I'm just going to check if this is stable enough. I think that's, it does go a bit left to right, but I think so does the top one, yeah. They go a bit left to right, but I think that's fine. And I do think I will need to reposition this fan. So basically this is what it is going to look like. And now I can put more plants here. I will show you how to use the IKEA clips and you don't really have to glue these pots. Because I'm a clumsy person, I sometimes knock or I used to knock these um, when they were not glued, I would knock the pot off the clip. So I will glue them in place now and I will show you how to do that. Then again, I think it's a very straightforward process. There is one more light here. I did turn it off because I need to replace it. I did not know at the time when I was installing it that this light has a buzzing sound. So something is wrong with this light, but it's also a very cheap light that I've been using and I've been using it for I think six months and you I will just turn it on so you can hear the buzzing I don't know if my camera can pick up on that I think it can the idea is to put some Hoyas here and also on the pegboard maybe this can be the last row so I think you know that can be something like that now you can hear the buzzing I think it's pretty loud, so I'm going to turn off that light. You can kind of see what that looks like. But anyways, I think, you know, we cannot go all the way down, so maybe this is the last row. I don't know how well you see, but I think we can also make use of these top rows. So I think if I get the same amount of Hoyas, I have about 10 Hoyas on the upper peg row, so I think if we can get 10 more to fit here, I will be happy. And then maybe four or five can go here in the front. We are going to film down here. You're supposed to do this in completely ventilated area. So not like me. I have my pods here and these are basically the clips from Ikea. These clips are meant for that board. What you can do is just take the pot, put a clip on it and hang it and that will hold but of course if you apply the right amount of force it can come off I'm going to secure these with glue I don't know if hot glue would work I assume yes to an extent but I'm going to use this moment fix express glue it takes 24 hours to dry so express is a lie and basically what I do as I struggle to open it and then I apply some of the glue on the pot and I think that's enough and you can see it's kind of like a paste I just take the clip and put it on there press it a bit and in 24 hours that will indeed be firm that's a bit more glue than I need and sometimes that happens and that's fine <laughs> then you get this and I don't really care about cleaning that up because it's from the back and no one is gonna see them from the back. I think that's a more sensible mount. We have this tray here and this is also something you can buy for Scotties. Um, I'm not sure what the price of this is and it fits on this board. It's a bit difficult to fit it when the board is so close to the glass. So if you just take it and move it a bit towards you, that works well. 
and I find that I can put three small plants in there. So I chose to put my Hoya, I think this is Hoya Passiflora. So she can go there. The tiny Hoya from my, from my Radsta cabinet. By the way, this was a cutting of this size. So she did grow and it is Hoya Tang Chongensis. Similar to serpents, but still different. And I do have my tiny, tiny Hoa Serpents. My bigger plant did not love the summer, so at least we have something there. Let's start putting more Hoyas in. Uh, I have Hoya Pusilla. You have seen that one. Pusilla BL10060. <laughs> Zero, 016. I think I'm going to put her in here. I said I'm going to put it in the tent, but I think I can just put it down here that is hoya what's your name pandurata actually it's quite interesting to have that hoya kind of stick out i have my outer variegated hoya bella and i think she can go maybe here what a center position i actually don't think i like hoya pusilla here and the last one that doesn't really need to go in the cabinet, but I'm going to put it in the cabinet, is Hoya Rebecca. She can grow fine outside of the cabinet, but, you know, since we're making the video, let's put her here. I do think we're easily going to fit a couple of more here, and I can fit one or two more here, and probably even two more here. We'll see. And then on the bottom, I don't know if I'm going to put anything on the bottom right now. I do think something slightly lower light could fit in there and it will look nice. Like Hoya Loki. That can go in there, but I don't find that Hoya Loki needs that humidity. Um, she is doing quite well for me outside of the cabinet. But something like that would be nice. She can go there too. And now she has enough space to go up and then maybe we can move that back level a bit maybe not here because of the fan we do not want because i actually had a vine go into the fan i actually think we can leave her there yeah that's that's fine actually i'm starting to like that i guess i can try to put my hoya my pegera. i think that's enough low light for her so it doesn't look overcrowded actually which i'm surprisingly liking i never thought i would say this but it seems to me that uncrowded Hoya spaces look better. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Am I okay? I think I'm going to move my Hoya Minutiflora from here. I think she can go here. Let's see, maybe even higher. And she fills out this space very nicely, I think. The reason I moved that Hoya down there is I want to fit my Hoya Waimani into higher light, which happens to be just right there. And I think maybe we can clip her. I don't know if you can see all of that. You can probably see the mess on the floor, but that's what it looks like. I put my Hoya Waimani here, and when I turn on that light, I think there is just enough light for everyone in there and I do have still space for some smaller Hoyas that can go in there. I think it will look very nice and we do have space down on the bottom for again some Hoyas that don't necessarily need a huge amount of light something like Hoya Loki, Multiflora. Let's just see if we can close the cabinet. This Hoya does stick out a bit but I think Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. I like that. That's gorgeous. Excellent job, Miro. Excellent. So this is the Rodsta cabinet. And I guess I should have opened it because now I'm not quite sure how I will approach the plants because there is a camera in front. So I think this is a good enough angle where you can see the plants and we will first take care of this top shelf and then we will go to the bottom one and as you can see it's not filled with plants it used to be but some of them did go to the tent so the first one and i think yes the tip 
of this did die back, which is not a surprise considering how much it grew into the top of the cabinet. I was just gonna let it do its thing, but I see my undulata, the tip once again died back. Again, I was just not gonna do much to it. I'm go I was gonna leave it and see how it will go, but... So I guess leaving them and not trellising them also doesn't help, and trellising them also makes them die back. This is Hoya I got also from Sweden, from Asa, and this is Hoya Pubicorolla Pink Dragon. I do have 1011, which is quite dark, and that bloomed recently. Unfortunately, these leaves, the way this grew, I don't think I'm going to be able to retrellis it. I will either have to cut the trellis or somehow just do something like this. Not quite sure what to do there. Anyways, I'm going to take her out so she can get a good shower. This one is starting to grow again, and this is Hoya Erythrina. Actually, we have a peduncle here with buds. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Yeah, you can see the buds there. Wonderful Hoya with gorgeous leaves. She needs to be retrellised. We have new growth here, so I'm going to check out to see how that goes. So we have our Hoya Finlaysoni Nova here. This one is in semi-hydro and I am going to repot this one. I have been holding off on repotting it because it was in bloom, but since that is no longer the case, I can actually repot this plant. These are possibly not the best angles. It's actually quite beautiful, but it's difficult to film because the light above the camera is one color, this is a different color. It's not easy to find the appropriate setting, or, you know, I'm just not capable of finding it. My Hoya Undulata is stuck. Okay, we have a new vine here. Unfortunately, the tip died back, so I'm just going to clip it. So there is nothing here. This is yellow, so we don't need that. So I think what I'm going to do is, or maybe I can actually use this one, and then make her go up, or actually first down, and once again, let's make her go up, and that's basically it. She did drop a leaf and she is stuck. The root system is stuck there, as you can see. That's why I hate these pots. So what I, I can do now, because I know this is gone, there's no nodes, I can just cut that. I don't know, maybe we will branch out here. Let's hope. Anyways, I'm going to move her out as well, give her a nice shower. My nemesis, Hoya Kloppenburgi, very, very slow. Nothing much happens with this Hoya. I'm not really sure. If you have any tips on growing this plant, let me know. My Hoya Mitrata needs to be repotted from Semi Hydro as well. She was going to bloom there, but I do see that those buds have blasted. Honestly, thankfully, because these flowers are on their way out very soon, so I will actually be able to repot her. As you can see, I have not cleaned out my Rotsta cabinet for a long time. These are the old flowers. This is Hoya that had a lot of mites for me, but now she's looking better. I do think she needs to be watered. Oh, she, she definitely needs to be watered. This is Hoya Mapigera. I have several Hoya onicoides. This is just one of them. I think I will move this into the tent. I have here Hoya Posiflora. I got just a small cutting of this and it's grown quite fast. So I think I will move this to my Millsbo. And I have Hoya Tang Chongensis that I recently repotted. As you can see, it's a very small cutting of Tang Chongensis and it started to grow. It was just this big and one of the propagations for my Hoya Serpents. And when you see them in person, they are different but that's hard to spot on camera. I have two lights here. They are on magnets and they are 17 watt lights. There's two up here 
and one 10 watt light down here because the bottom level which I will show you is very close to <laughs> to the bottom of the cabinet I had to move it down so you can see um, so you can see how filthy it is so I think here will be a good place to put propagation so I actually think I'm going to turn off this light because I'm not going to have plants now my initial idea for the Ratsta cabinet was not to use any shelves just to put plants here but I thought you know it's too far away there's quite a lot of space so I think it's a good thing to have this level here if you know you manage to trellis them nicely and compactly I think you could fit 15 Hoyas here and if you don't manage to do that if you don't manage to you know if they're not very compact then yes you will fit less of them I will also obviously clean the cabinet I will do that right now and thankfully there's not a lot of glass there's only sides it's time to clean these are on top of my Mills book cabinet that is Hoya Lucky it actually grew quite a bit in the past month so this is also Hoya that stays on top of the cabinet this is my Hoya Multiflora the variegated Hoya Multiflora I mentioned in a video that I don't really like her because the old variegation looks well, it doesn't look so good but then she put out these wonderful new leaves and I don't know I'm starting to like her a bit more like they're bigger more variegated I think she is looking great actually so who knows maybe she will become one of my favorites again maybe I will regret what I said about her in a video I think she heard me what I said about her and you know I'm also watering her more so it's probably that um, but she does need to be watered. I watered her like two days ago. What's happening? I also have this other multiflora that clearly would have benefited from some kind of a stake. This is SV406, one of my favorite clones. I think she will have to graduate to being a hanging plant because we're not fixing that. And my philodendron domesticum is outside of the tent. I absolutely hate it. Um, you can see... It's very yellow it's too much it's no chlorophyll and the leaves kind of melted as soon as I took it out of the tent we do have some good irrigation here but I think I will you know I will wait to see what this leaf will look like but I might need to cut that which is fine I guess anyways it's time for me to put my hair back and clean the Radsta cabinet from the top to the bottom sorry for the look but it's a chore video and let's keep it real like when I see people doing chores and looking fabulous I'm like I know you don't look like that because I do chores and on a chore day I look like trash also on other days so i have here my hoya finlay sony nova it's one of the two plants i need to repot before it goes into the rot stump it is in semi-hydro and i do see that the roots are coming down here as you can see some of the roots are not that great because once again this plant has been <laughs> underwatered wonder who did that okay i'm going to stop talking and dump out leka unfortunately i don't think there is a gentle way to untangle these roots this is a microfiber cloth because this was supposed to be self-watering and it worked you know while i was filling out the reservoir Ooh. so these are the roots we have some mineral buildup these are not root mealybugs i'm going to try to remove all of the leka because i'm transitioning this to pawn uh, you know we have to accept that not all of these roots will make it and that's fine i will also damage some of the roots not on purpose a lot of these are dead because a leka as i said if you don't keep the reservoir filled which is something that i don't do enough uh, then you know the leka gets dry and it will wick away moisture from the roots killing them basically but there is a lot of healthy root there and you know this is not the first two that i've transitioned from semi-hydro and 
I have to say, I did not have as terrible of a transition uh, experience transitioning Hoyas from Semi Hydro to Pawn, nor from Semi Hydro to mix of Cocoa Peat, Perlite, and Pumice. So that's what the roots look like. I think they look good. Here we have my pawn, and I will use these clear pots. Some people have asked me how I make the pawn mixture because this is DIY, this is not Lechuza. I use pumice that I buy from Equigenera, and you can see the size of that. I think it's larger than the pumice that is in pawn mix by Lechuza. I think it's four to eight millimeters. Then I have lava rock, which is the brown thing. There is no fertilizer in here. We do have to fertilize each time we water, and there is zeolite. And the proportions that I use are two parts of pumice, two parts of lava rock, and one part of zeolite. As you can see, it's not pre-rinsed. I will rinse this. I used to rinse my um, each of these ingredients separately in the past, I have stopped doing that. I've gotten a bit lazy when it comes to that, but basically what I will do is I will rinse them once they are potted. I will rinse them in the bathtub. So I'm not going to upsize this because again, as I said, there will be some root dye back for sure. So I'm just going to leave it in pretty much similar size pot. Shake it a bit so they, so all the particles find their space. Honestly, this is fine. I did transfer my undulata. She was okay. She did not complain. And Finlaysoni is generally a tougher Hoya, so again, I don't think this is going to be an issue. And I think this is definitely my last Hoya. This is Hoya Mitrata. The last Hoya in San Hydro. As you can see, she is in bloom, but the, these blooms, they're about to go out. You can see here, it's browning. Actually, if I probably, yeah, if I probably pull on them a bit, they can, they come off. And dump out the lacquer. So not a very extensive root system, I would say. Not quite pleased with that. It's a healthy plant. I don't know if you can see, that's a big domatia down here. I actually made a video on Hoimitrata if you're interested. It's gorgeous. Just looking at those leaves from the bottom, which is not something you frequently see. I think this is quite an interesting Hoya. And we can see actually how purple that gets. That's what she looks like. Let's see if we can zoom out. I'm going to go and water these now, these two Hoyas that I've just repotted, and they're going back into my Rodsta cabinet. And I will be with you shortly, without the accent, I hope. It is the one millionth day of my chores, and I have cleaned the cabinet. I didn't weather strip it, actually, not even when I bought it. I can see it holds decent humidity, but it will need to be weather stripped which I'm not going to do today. I'm going to leave that for some, you know, for future Miro. But I have prepared Hoyas that I don't think will fit, honestly, on that one shelf. Hold on just for a moment. I'm just gonna wheel in my... I'm going to wheel in my desk and move the camera. <laughs> so they... <laughs> these are all the Hoyas that I have left for the cabinet. Um, something tells me they're not gonna fit. I do think that it's because, you know, putting them on this desk um, and comparing them to the actual size of the cabinet, we can see that, that it's just not going to fit. There's no way. But anyways, I'm going to try to fit as many as I can. I'm going to start with Hoyas that I like the most. We have my Hoya Metrata, which I just repotted. When I say just, I mean yesterday. I'm just going to put her in a similar spot where she was. Then Hoya Finlaysoni Nova, she was also in the cabinet. Not many can fit, to be quite honest, because they're quite big. My Hoya Undulata will go in the... I was actually thinking about moving Hoya Undulata in my tent, 
But I think for the time being, I'm going to leave it in the cabinet. I think I want to put Hoya Wang Viangensis here as well. Oh, she fits perfectly there. Tips and tricks, sometimes if you move your plants by a couple of centimeters or rotate them, <laughs> you may be able to fit in more. I do have this lovely Hoya Erythrina that it would be very nice if she could fit here, but I think that's too tightly packed. Let's try this. Okay, I had to move you a little bit because I have no idea if you can see this one. This is my Hoya Apoda. She has grown a very nice vine and I, I need to kind of retrellis her because this is obviously not a great example. I think I want to put her somewhere right there. I do have Hoya for the back, Hoya species SR 2009-005. I think she can go towards the back. This plant was in my Millsville cabinet. Okay, I think that's somewhat okay. I think I'm going to put the rest in the tent. This was, or this still is, Hoya Salata maybe. No, this is Bobby Corolla. This is Bobby Corolla Pink Dragon. This one I retrellised in my video and you can see how that backfired. Now this is stuck here and actually I could probably leave it. I just think I will do this. I think, you know, if I think if, if I put it here, it's too much. I think I'm going to just put it in the tent. Currently, I'm going to leave this empty as my decision. I'm going to leave that empty. I will make use of the lower shelf. Don't worry about that. I'm waiting for those Hoyas to be ready and we can save up on electricity. I have about five more Hoyas, um, but obviously they don't fit here. But those five bigger Hoyas will go into the tent. So I have Hoya the Corolla Pink dragon. This was sold to me as Hoya Griffithi. I don't think this is Hoya Griffithi. Actually, this one is from the tent. This is Hoya Aliona, and I'm going to put her back in the tent. The reason it's out of the tent is because it fell, and I had to pot her back. My Hoya Klopenborgi will go back. She was in the cabinet, and I don't know, like, she is growing, but I think we can try the tent again. Not a pretty Hoya, in my opinion, honestly. The flower is pretty, but... The growth pattern, the leaves, do not spark joy. I do have my Hoya Obavata variegated. She was on top of my Millsville cabinet, but I don't want anything on top of that cabinet now, except of some hanging plants. So I'm going to put her in the tent. I was going to put her on top of the Ratsta, and I might do that eventually, but for now I think we need to find her a nice... Can she fit? No. <laughs> I think we need to find her a nice spot in the tent. And yeah, I know this is kind of an underwhelming setup for the Rodsta cabinet, but I actually like the simple setup, and I think it will look nice when I get some plants for the bottom as well. Well, that was a very brief video. I think to anyone who made it up until this point, Congratulations. In my defense, all I have to say is there is four and a half hours of footage for this video and, you know, it probably took close to 30 hours just to edit the video, so it, it took some time. But anyways, that is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this very brief update and that you like the new setups. Again, I know that the Rodsta in the back isn't the most exciting setup, but I think that Mills Bow looks quite nice and then I think we can play around with the Rodsta cabinet a bit more in the future. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and as a reward for making it until the end, you can subscribe. Not sure if that's a reward or a punishment. I will see you very soon. There is some extra additional footage at the end of the video, so if you want to watch that, you can stick around. And that's it. Have a wonderful day and bye! I'm holding my phone in my hands because I am recording the sound into my phone. I am so far away from my camera that I don't think that that microphone will do a good job at picking me up. But what? Let's hold for the motorbikes to pass by. I uploaded a video about my Hoya Grow Tent, which you can see to the side, and I mentioned in that video how I am 195 or 196 centimeters tall, and a lot of people were shocked by that, and 
I think a lot of people are in disbelief, so... Evidence? You can see me next to the Millsville cabinet, and if you have one, well... It's, a, it's really a small cabinet, I think. Also, just for comparison, this is me next to my two Grotenths, and they are 200 centimeters tall, so... <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not short. I'm not short. I really wish I knew what was going on with my hair and with my accent. I really wish I knew what was going on with my hair. That's not good. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My two anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carey, Cynthia Taylor, Danube Daniels, Estelle Farah, Houseplant Heather, Hoya Heather, Jacques Plant Journey, Jessica Chio, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Lauren Alexandra, Mars B, Martina Alive Perde, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nicole and Caleb of Schleve Tropicals, PJ, Rachel Claude Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya, TJWO, Vicky Dingler, Wojtek Takac, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, and Zlokov Nipani. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons. Angelina Farnan, Anne Margaret, Brana Phillips, Catherine G, Kilone, Claudia L, David Condia, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Morgana Devina, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plantolania, Ringlove, and Sheila Mason Casper. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Brandon Pacheco, Caroline Carey, Erin Keenan, Lauren M, Marissa, Paula Plants, and Tang Watanas Riakul. Thank you all so much for incredible support, and even more thank you for watching this video. Honestly, I barely did it. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope that you like the new setup. Have a wonderful weekend, stay safe, and I will see you soon.